Hello, everyone. Um, I'm officially on a break. Uh, I'm not doing any videos this summer, but here I am. Um, one of the reasons I wasn't doing any videos was um, because it's summer, um, but also because I knew I was going to be traveling um, first to the Netherlands, then to Scotland for a few weeks, then back to the Netherlands. Um, I'm in my mother's living room right now. So, um, yeah, I thought, like, I, I'm not going to be back home until um, the end of August. So I thought it would be better if I just, you know, um, skip the videos, give myself a little break. But um, there was a reason I was in Scotland for two weeks and I wanted to talk a little bit about that, hence my title. Because um, what I did in Scotland, um, I went to the uh, 20, like, I don't know, if, I don't know if any of my audience knows uh, 20 books of 50k big online uh, group uh, Facebook group for uh, indie publish uh, indie writers um, where you can find anything about marketing tips um, how to publish your book um, it's a whole it's 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 a very big group uh, and they do these yearly conferences in Vegas and they just have one in Bali they had one in London last year and they decided to do one in Edinburgh um, this year and they say it's going to be the last uh, European one so I was, I'm really glad I went there uh, it was my first 20 books 50k uh, conference and I had no idea when I when I went there I had no idea like I have to admit one of the reasons I uh, like one of the reasons I got a ticket was because it was in Scotland. Um, as you know, that's part of, like uh, I have two nationalities. One of them is Scottish. Uh, my dad's from Scotland. I've never been to Edinburgh, so good excuse uh, to go to Scotland. I also like my co-writer loves Scotland. Um, we write a romance series that's partly set in Cyprus, partly set in Scotland. So basically we said to each other, well, you know, we could, you know, it's a good excuse to uh, to just, you know, see each other again because we hadn't seen each other. Um, we saw each other in, in 2018 in, in June, uh, at the end of June. So we were like, it's going to be a great excuse to see each other again. So the moment um, the conference was announced, we just said, Look, that's just book tickets. And we did. And I'll admit, um, the conference started on Thursday and I didn't look at the program until the Tuesday before. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I just knew I'm going to Scotland. I'm going to Edinburgh. I'm going to see my co-writer who's watching as well uh, right now. Um, I just knew I had to go there. So I went. Um, it was there that I realized the conference was actually a mixture of a conference and a writing retreat. So it was two days of writing, uh, two days of conference, and then three days of writing, which was amazing. Uh, and there were quite a few people who just came for the conference or just for the first two days of writing in the conference or for the conference in the last three days of writing. But we just said when we first um, decided to go, let's just go for the whole week. Um, and that's probably why I completely forgot what the whole week was going to be about because we just said, let's go. We just do, we're just going to do this. So we did it. Um, and it was, uh, it was my first writing conference as well. Uh, like I've, I've, I'm familiar with uh, academic conferences. It was my first writing conferences. So I had no idea what I was going to get myself into, but it was such a blast that I really felt the need to uh, say something about that and talk a little bit about the lessons that I learned there, um, which have less to do with, um, although like I learned an awful lot about marketing, um, how to put yourself out there as an author uh, to your readers, how to get, like how to find your right audience, how to get to that audience. I learned like an awful lot, like the conference, like I said, the conference was only two days, but it was like, chock full with, with, with talks with brilliant people and they taught me so much and it's like some of the presentations uh felicia you know talking about you well like went completely over my head um because i'm not there yet uh, and it's just not my lingo yet uh, but i know i'll be able to in in, in the coming uh, few months to sort of incorporate uh, that lingo more and understand uh she was specific felicia beachley i'm talking about she talks about amazon ads and she's like intensely intelligent um and I was just sitting there like, I know nothing. Um, but yeah, I know that. And she's, I, I believe she's working on a course right now. So I know I'll be, uh, I'll, I know I'll be getting uh, into that. And I'll, I'll know I'll learn more about that because it was extremely interesting. It was just mind blowing. Like the, the, the levels, the way you can level up your marketing, um, 
uh, by by really like diving deep into Amazon it was just amazing uh, to see, uh, and like I said, it was mind blowing. So the conference itself, like I learned a lot there, but I also learned a lot about myself as an author, um, as a person, uh, and how I connect to other people. And that's what I wanted to talk. I mean, like author mindset is my thing, um, so that is what I wanted to talk about uh, today. And that's that's why I um, broke away from my little um, hiatus um, to share these uh, lessons with you. So I'm just looking at my notes there because, as you know, my brain, uh, you know, everything's happening all at once. So I have some structure. Um, oh, yeah. So basically what we did is we went to uh, Edinburgh for a week. Me and my co-writer, Sheena Mary, we went to uh, Edinburgh for a week. And then we added a few days in the Highlands um, to work on our romance series because we were going to, like, at the conference, we were going to work on our own stuff. Um, and we do, like, a wide variety of, of things. Um, and then we were going to work on the romance um, like plot the next series um, while we're at the writing retreat. So that was the plan, like two weeks of uh, being in Scotland and just writing, 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 writing. I had no work planned. I had like in the in the second week, a little work in through that I had to do, um, but yet mostly we were there to just write, 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 uh, and we did. Um, so what I want to talk about, one of the things, um, and I posted also a message on Instagram about this, and I've talked about this before, um, I always advise, like, I tend to attract um, clients who feel that they're doing things different, sometimes slightly different, sometimes wildly different than what other people uh, are doing or what other people, what it seems other people are doing. So this is what they, what they read online or what they hear in their online uh, groups or what they hear from their writing friends. It's not what they're doing. Um, so people don't understand them. Sometimes it's about, you know, you being a writer, but your friends um don't really get what you're doing so what do you do how do you how do you people don't respect your boundaries because you're a writer so how do you um find your uh, tribe or your clan i prefer I, I prefer to use the word clan how do you pref how do you find the people who resonate with you and understand you and respect you and and respect you as a writer um and i have so many authors who are like in that middle like they understand that the people they knew um, the people that they had in their environment aren't necessarily the best for them if they want to pursue this career, but they also haven't yet connected to the people that will understand them, who will get what they're going through, who will resonate with them. So they're in this middle, uh, this very lonely, um, can be very lonely middle that you're already saying goodbye to one group, but you just you, you haven't yet made the connections that you need to make to make you feel at home. Um, so this is something that comes up a lot uh, in my when when I coach clients. So um, so I talk I talk a lot about that, like the necessity to even even if you're feeling like you're just you're all alone. Um, I talk a lot about the uh, the importance of like speaking up, speaking your truth, and saying it loud and proud so that the other the other weirdos can find you, right? Because um, if you don't show if you don't show the world, you don't demonstrate what your message is. If you don't talk like I said, loudly and clear about um, what you what you came here to do, uh, nobody's going to know. And you're not going to find the right people because maybe you already know the right people. Uh, and that often happens as well. The people think they have to um, stick, stay away or, or move on from certain people. But then when they start like being honest about uh, what they're doing, what they're writing, why they're writing, they actually realize these people are writers as well, or they have the exact same um, worldview on certain things, but they just never spoke up because they didn't know from each other um, that they agreed on that. And often um, like their particular worldviews aren't the standard one. Um, so there's the fear of being rejected, uh, being rejected um, for saying something that goes against the grain, right? So um, that was a topic for me. The whole speaking up so the other waiters can hear you. Um, like, like I said, that a part of my that a part of my title is walk the damn talk. Um, so I say this a lot. But the fear of rejection is very like that. Like that is strong in this one. Um, I'm always afraid because um, I often <laughs> I tend to disagree a lot with people, especially um, when there's a particular kind of advice and everybody just goes after it um, without you know 
pausing and, and, and being critical about what's being said, who said it, who does it apply to, does it apply to everyone? A lot of people just see, some, see something, do something, it looks successful, and then they just go, and I'm like, wait a second, um, is this actually gonna work? Is it actually, like, do we have, like, long-term results? Uh, does it work for everybody? Um, who said this was gonna work? Like, what, what what's at stake for them? Like, do they have anything? Um, could they benefit from people just running after them? So I, I tend to be I tend to be critical, um, and I plainly tend to disagree a lot uh, with people. And um, I don't always like to speak up because I know people can be very like, why, why are you saying that? Don't you see what we're all doing it? Yeah, that we're all doing it is for me not necessarily um, a reason to um, grant something like uh, the status of yeah, this is gonna work. Like I like this. Um, so yeah, the speaking up, uh, speaking up thing has been um, a thing for me um, for as long as I can remember. So how does that connect to this particular conference? Well, when we got there, uh, like I said, we were going to work on, um, Sheena, Mary and I, we were going to work on, on our own projects first. And I have been working on two books on tarot spreads um, for the past two months or so, approximately. And for some reason, I wasn't putting them out yet like I wasn't working on them really but I told myself okay I know there's a I know there's going to be non-fiction like during the writing retreat writing retreat they made rooms so there was a romance room uh, there was a fantasy room there was an urban fantasy room uh, there was a non-fiction room there was a mystery room uh, there was a sweet romance room there was a children's room so everybody who wrote in a particular genre uh, could find their own people and write together right well I started off in the romance room because one of the things I wanted to do, like I was still finishing the beta reads. Uh, no, I was for the beta, for the next beta round, I was finishing the edits um, for the third book in the romance series that I write with Sheena Mary under the uh, pen name uh, Heather McClee. Um, so I first wanted to, to um, I first wanted to finish that. And I actually told myself if I finish that by the 1st of August, I'll be fine. Like that's going to be great. Of course, now I'm thinking one of the reasons why I thought the 1st of August was going to be great was because otherwise people would see me uh, playing with my tarot book. Um, and I don't think I felt ready at that point. But because it was a writing retreat and because uh, apparently um, in the romance room, nobody plays like that, like we really, really quickly got the name um, of this really intense, focused, uh, word-producing group um, who don't like to play, they just go. Um, I was there for two days and that was really useful. So within the two days, actually the, the, the second morning, I already finished uh, the edits uh, to the third book. So now I had to work on my nonfiction. I had to make that switch and that took me like I was really happy that the conference started because I needed the time. I, first of all, of course, like going from romance to a nonfiction project that is like you have to put a different hat on. Right. So that was already a, a complex thing for me. Um, but I thought I could do that within like an afternoon, you know, so we were in Edinburgh with the university. So I decided to walk a little bit up Arthur's seat and, and hopefully like something came to me. It didn't really. I felt a lot of reluctance in switching genre. So luckily for me, there was the conference. But then of course, um, like Monday morning came around and I was super tense and, and looking back now, I think it was because I knew I had to do the nonfiction. So I wanted to be in a nonfiction room and that meant I had to admit to people what I was working on. And I didn't really like, I told a few people um, that I was working on that. I also told like, I brought some of my card decks with me. So I also, uh, told a few people that maybe one of the afternoons um, I was gonna like put on the Facebook group that I had some card decks with me and I was sitting in this particular corner. Like the second part of the writing retreat happened in a castle, like an actual proper, like it was, it was small, it was an actual castle. Um, so I was like, that's the perfect place to do some readings. So I, I was pushing myself uh, to do that. So I already told a lot, of, like, uh, well, not a lot of, it's like a few people, like two or three people that I might be doing readings on the Tuesday. Um, you know, to see if I could connect to people because I was uh, writing uh, these 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 tarot books, these nonfiction tarot books um, containing tarot spreads, and this was a good opportunity to test some of that because, of course, these books are directed to writers and other creators. I mean, that's the subtitle uh, um, of these two books. So Monday morning, I was super tense. Um, I was late. 
as well. I told Sheena, uh, Sheena and I shared an Airbnb. I told her, you just go. I just need some time to myself. And I don't know how it happened, but suddenly I was thinking, you know what? I'm just going to bring all my decks um, to the to the university. We were just um, we were staying at Airbnb just outside of the university uh, campus. Uh, I was like, I'm just going to bring all my decks. And if I walk into that building, that little castle, like I hadn't been in there yet. If I walk into that little castle and I find the perfect corner to sit down with my laptop, with my card decks, I'm just going to do it. Like screw Tuesday afternoon. Why Tuesday afternoon? I'm just going to do it now, right? I'm just going to, I'm just going to uh, take that leap. And it was a leap because the fear of rejection was like extremely strong within me because I thought like I had made such great connections over the first few days. Um, like really connected to a lot of people um, on, on different levels, different topics. Um, really think I, I made friends there, like in those four days, like I made people that I know I'm going to um, have in my life, like for the rest of my life. And there was a fear, like, what if, what if they see me and now I'm the weird girl in the corner with her cards, right? Um, and like, and I've talked about this before as well, like I never wanted to connect my, my, my professional, my professional work. So my coaching, my editing, my translating, um, I, I always wanted to uh, leave the spirituality out of it, right? And even though like I, I failed massively because somehow I just attract clients who need that, uh, sometimes because they write holistic books that I need to edit or need to translate. Sometimes because they need a little more from me. Um, when I coach them, they need a more broader holistic approach. So I, I need to do something and I have to make a suggestion like, I could do this. I don't easily make that suggestion. Like if you, um, if, if you're my client, if you're a new client, I'm not going to like take my tarot cards out and go like, let's start with this. No, I only do that when I think the client needs it. And that takes me, that's a big threshold for me. So I always try to keep the two separate. And of course, producing those tarot book is my first attempt to try to marry those. So um, the fear of rejection, like I was like, I have my backpack and it was a happy backpack because I put all my text in it uh, and my laptop and my notebook. Um, and I was just walking there and I was like, oh God, am I really going to do this? Am I really going to do this? And then I walk into that castle and I looked like there was the entrance and you had to go to the right and like right in the corner was this lovely, it was really like, it was like um, a corner bench. Um, in a gorgeous sort of like, you know, uh, um, velvety, um, like burgundy kind of color. It had like this sort of, you know, very antique table in front of it, like a coffee table. Uh, and it was empty. So I went up to some people of the organization and was like, can I sit everywhere in this castle? Like, is that, I know we have rooms to write in. Can I sit everywhere? Yes, I could sit everywhere. And I was like, shit, now I have to do it. So I sat down. Um, in that little corner which was right beside the entrance right so i was like everybody's gonna see me like i was you know i was between the entrance and the coffee corner so i was like i did take a leap like it was like if you know if I, if you know, go big or go home right um so i said i set myself up there took a picture of the spot put it in a Facebook group and went like, okay, so I um working on this book. So this is research. That was really my excuse. I kept telling myself, this is called research. So this is why you're allowed to do this. Um, I set myself up, put a, uh, put the photo, photo on, on Facebook, grabbed my laptop and sort of told myself, if I sit here all morning until 12, just working on my book, that is fine. That is very useful. If people don't come to me, that is okay. Then this is not my audience. Um, within five, 15 minutes, I had a queue. Like, I'm not even kidding. At one point, I was like, I need to pee right now and maybe some tea. I just need to drink something and I need some food. People just kept coming. And um, that was amazing. Like, it was like, I started, like, I promised them because um, I got this new deck uh, from Sheena Mary for my birthday. It's called. Um, bitch slaps from the universe uh, which is just perfect like it just fits me very well um so i was like i sold it like you know on on the facebook group like if you want a bitch slap from the universe uh you know find me in the corner and i'll draw you a card so that's how it started really um 
and I was just going to do daily cards. So I put all my decks out there and I was just like, do you want a daily card? And then with it, before I knew it, um, you know, that, that daily card made people react in such a way that I had to draw more cards or even do like a proper reading. Uh, and then people came to me with actual questions. Uh, so I did like uh, spreads. I, I tested some spreads from my new book. It was like, it was like literally like uh, an, another mind blowing experience. Um, because here I was thinking I was going to be rejected as the weirdo in her corner with her cards. Like who, who, who the fuck is she? Um, like, I, I don't know her. Like, uh, um, but no, no, that was not the case. Like I said, like I had a queue and then I was going to do it just for the morning. But then um, when it was like time for lunch, uh, people were like, are you still going to do this? And I was like, well, I need to, to write something this afternoon. Like I, it's a writing review. Like I have to put something up. Um, so yeah so i decided well you know what i can do it uh tuesday as well and then on tuesday there was another queue so i decided to do some more on wednesday which was the last day um and like i said like i had to, it was a brilliant experience um but there was still a fear because um on the one hand i was like see this is amazing because in those first four days i connected to a particular kind of people um who i really resonate with who, uh, like I said, I think will, uh, will, will remain in my life, uh, my entire life. But these were not, ex except for a few people, most of them were not the ones who came to me for readings. So the next fear came in, I thought by showing my true colors, you know, that I would lose the people that I just connected with. And that didn't happen. We didn't talk about card readings either. Like when we met again um, at the coffee corner during lunch at the bar later uh, later at dinner, we just continued talking about the stuff we already talked before. So for them, I did not become uh, I did not become like the card reading lady. I was still the same person, and that was something I did as well. Like, oh, you were the person doing the cards. Oh, cool. That was it. We just talked because that's not their thing. So we didn't talk about that. And that's totally fine. So what I realized basically was um, I had a double fear. First of all, everybody's going to reject me. And second of all, everybody who already embraced me is now going to reject me. Now I'm showing my true colors. But in fact, what the conference made me realize is that I have different ways. Of, there are actually different ways. Like I have different ways of connecting to people. And, uh, and of course, like, on some level, I already knew this. Like I said, like when I coach my clients, like I don't throw cards at them. That's like I, I hardly ever do unless I know they're into spirituality. And I'm like, you know what, if we maybe we can ask cards and then we can see if we find a new insight or something. And then they go like, yeah, that might be useful. Then I will do it. But that's not something that I would do um, instantly. So. I, I, I basically I knew this already, like I like I said on a conscious level, but it made me aware that I there are just so many ways of connecting to people. And with some people you connect them this way and some people you connect them that way. And that doesn't mean you cannot uh do both. Like I am now not um me taking my cards out did not turn me into the crazy card lady in the corner. It just made me into oh you do that as well. Oh, cool. And if that didn't resonate to other people, that did not become part of our conversation with other people. It's the only thing I talked about, but we didn't connect to any other level, which is fine as well. With some people, I found out that we have this, right? So we both, we both married the two concepts. So we could, we could talk about um, how the two are connected. And we did like from the uh, 20 books to 50 K at a bro conference conference, we did uh, end up making a, um, a Facebook group for writers who use tarot in their writing. Um, so I am going to explore this much more with other people. So I did connect to people who already used it too. So there was a diff. So there was for me, um, I'm completely losing my thread here. For me, it really showed um, that the fear I had that, you know, first of all, like my fear was always, I cannot marry the two. Um, and then the fear was, if I do marry the two, the one becomes the most important thing and people will i don't know um disregard my other knowledge um people will stop seeing me for uh the professional i am because i also do this i mean um tarot is still the sort of you know it's it's it's, it's a little woo woo so um i was afraid that people would sort of like 
first think of me like, oh, you're a professional, you know what you're talking about. Oh, but you always also do that. So it completely sort of disavows my other uh, qualities and skills. And I realized, no, first of all, they can exist next to each other. I can be both uh, at the same, I can be both, but I, I also can be both at the same time. Uh, and that for me was a really big lesson um, because for me, that means that I can stay true to my creative self because working with the tarot that's just something that's been keep coming up for me like not just tarot cards cards in general and i i am planning um another challenge before nanowrimo um in october uh, because that just i don't know it just i just they just that it's just really inspiring to me to to work with it and of course like in the end and that is sort of also the click uh, the click that I made, the, 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 that sort of hit home to me. And of course, like I said before, I already knew this. I already knew this, but I wasn't conscious of the fact that I knew this. Is that, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, tarot, oracle, runes, whatever you use, that is, it's just a tool. It's a tool to connect to your intuition. And Basically, connecting to your intuition is something that writers need because the more writers are grounded and connected um, to their true self or whatever you call it, like their core, their creative core, the better the work they're going to put out, the, the more they know what they need to say, how they have to say it, um, how to reach the right people. So it's just a tool. So it makes all the sense that it's a great tool for writers as well. And of course, I know people who use tarot uh, to plot their books. And I, I, I know very little about that. And I'm really, I just got a book by uh, Corinne Kenner, I think her name is, that got recommended to me. I am really curious to learn more about that. I use it for the author mindset. So I use it to talk about, to, to figure out, um, to shed a light basically on your limiting beliefs, your creative roadblocks, um, what do you need to create, what should you be creating, what should you prioritize, um, why do you struggle between two different or more diff uh, or multiple projects. That's how I use cards. Like I really use it for the mindset. Um, but yes, there are writers who, who use it to, to plot their books because of course um, the, the tarot then, uh, when we talk specifically about the tarot, the tarot has the story structure within itself, uh, within it. Uh, I know very little about it, like I said, and I'm, 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 I'm sort of catching up on that right now, but I've always used it for, for more mindset issues. Um, so yeah, so that's, uh, to cut a long story very short, that's what I learned about walking the damn talk. Um, I don't, so, okay, so how, how would I sum this up? For me, like, well, like the things I learned was uh, I can be uh, both at the same time. I can also be one when, depending on the context, I can be the other depending on the context. There's nothing wrong with that. And also um, people, you know, from this context don't necessarily uh, disregard you or reject you because you also do this. Right. They will understand. And of course, I knew that I, I like I knew everything uh, about this, but it's the fear of reject, rejection that makes um, it very difficult uh, to see. And I mean, at the end of the day, like we all want to be embraced. We don't want to be rejected. Um, but I think for me, like I got a really high reward for um, showing up, speaking my truth um, and, and finally walking uh, my own talk, something I've been saying for years to my clients, uh, but aren't always doing uh, the way I should. But I think walking into that castle and picking the corner right next to the entrance, that was the first 50 minutes were probably not the most, not, not, not the scariest of my life, but definitely, definitely very scary. Like I was waiting for people to come up to me like, what the hell are you doing? Who are you? What are you doing here? This is a writing conference that did not happen at all. Um, and I, I think the people who had nothing, who, who that whole modality, does, it's basically just another modality to, to connect to yourself, right? Whether you use meditation, yoga, um, journaling, it's just another tool, like I said. Um, I think the people who just didn't have anything, didn't resonate, they just stay clear. And when they wanted to talk to me about the stuff we already connected over, they just waited for me to put my cards back um, in, my, in my backpack. And, you know, we just went on from there. Uh, so that is definitely what I learned. Um, that sometimes you just have to take leap. It, you know, honestly, even if I hadn't had these results, I still should have taken the leap just to learn this lesson. Because uh, even if people hadn't been... Um, 
responding the way they, they did, uh, I would have learned that, okay, so then this is not my audience. Doesn't mean my audience isn't there. Um, but yeah, I did, I did find my audience. Um, and I think a lot of them will remain really good friends um, throughout my life. Let me check if I have anything else to say. No, that was it. Okay, so I can't promise any more videos um, until the end of summer. I've, I'm working on a lot of things right now. Like I said, there's another, oh yeah, I was gonna show you the cover um, of my book, um, of my new book, this is it. Um, it was the, uh, so let's get out of your way, a 31 day tarot challenge for writers and other creatives. Um, it was a number one new release on Amazon US uh, for a few days, which was really awesome. Uh, I got an orange banner. I mean, that, that was totally unexpected, of course. Like that was like, I was like, what does this even mean? Um, I know what it means now, but it was just like, it was, I took a screenshot uh, because when it's gone, it's gone. And it's, I think it's gone now, uh, but that was really cool. Um, I'm working on the other uh, tarot book. I'm also, of course, it's almost September. So that means in, about four to five weeks, my new writing program, my fall writing program starts. Uh, I'm really looking forward to starting that as well. I'm also uh, going to redo the heart to heart conversations um, because the last one didn't actually get uploaded on Facebook and that was a loss because that was a really, really good interview. So I'm also reworking on that. What else have I done in the meantime? I have not actually had a holiday. Like I've worked a lot. Oh, I put for those. I know a lot of people are interested in the uh, in my 50 uh, week program, so my year long writing program. Um, but I also know it's an investment. If you haven't actually, uh, if you can't actually see what the program is going to be about, so for those people, I put the first week uh, on my website. I'll put the link in the uh, in the description here. I put the uh, I, I put an example uh, to show you what kind, what are the kind of questions you can expect, what are the kind of writing prompts you can expect, what are the kind of writing quotes uh, you can expect, you know, to keep you inspired, just so people have more of an idea of um, of what the program is about before they commit to it. Um, anything else? I'm working on a on a book um, with John Robin, another writing coach. Um, it's very early stages, but, but the plan is to I don't know. We don't have a publishing plan. He, I think he has a publishing plan. I don't. Uh, I don't have a timeline for that. But we're gonna write a book about imposter syndrome um, and how to kick that to the curb. So that's gonna be really awesome. Um, as you know from this talk, it's something I still deal with. I think we'll all always be uh, dealing with it. So yeah. Um, Definitely something uh, I'm really looking forward to diving into and, and writing a book on, on, on how to uh, keep sane when that happens. No writing program I discussed. No, I think that's it. I'm also like in, in about a week, I'll be doing my new newsletter. If you haven't signed up for my newsletter, please do. I'll uh, add a link to that as well. As you know, uh, or some of you might know, don't know if everybody knows, if you sign up to my newsletter, you get the, um, free worksheets to get rid of limiting beliefs around creativity uh, in your inbox as well. I think that's it for now. I hope you're having a good summer. If there's something you want to talk about, um, comment um, and, and I'll respond. Okay. Thank you so much for listening um, and see you all soon.